you want to make sourdough pizza, but you don't have a baking steel, you don't have a pizza stone, I'm going to show you how to make incredible, light, crisp, and airy sourdough pizza in a 9 by 13 inch baking pan instead. Start by adding 50 grams of bubbly active sourdough starter to a large mixing bowl. Then add 250 grams of water. Do you see how my sourdough starter is floating on top? That's what you want. That means that the starter is active and strong. Add 360 grams of bread flour, followed by seven grams of sea salt. I like to use fine sea salt because it dissolves very easily. Mix with a fork to get the dough going and once it gets too stiff to sort of turn around in the bowl, you're gonna wanna switch to your hands and start mixing until the flour is fully incorporated. Mixing the dough is really satisfying, by the way. It's sticky, it's rough, it's shaggy. It's just really fun to sort of get in there and play around with. After 30 minutes of resting at room temperature, this is what your dough is going to look like. Now you're going to fold the dough over itself several times to create a rough ball. This is very similar to the stretch and fold technique, except the dough is actually a lot tighter and not easier to stretch. You can also pick the dough up and slap it back down into the bowl to create more of a structured, rounded shape. Oil a high-sided dough tub. Get the bottom, get the sides. You're gonna to wanna to rub your hands too. And then place the dough inside to rise. The temperature is around 68 degrees, so you're looking at a 10 hour rise time, but if it's warmer by you, it's going to take a lot less time. So always pay attention to the dough and not the clock. It should be about double in size when ready. Now that the dough is ready, scoop it out of your container and place it into an oiled baking pan. The next step is to dimple the dough. So after a bulk rise, it's normal for the dough to be a little stiff. So you're not going to be able to get it to fit the entire dimensions of the pan. So just take your time, don't force it, and stretch it as best as you can. Cover the pan with an inverted baking sheet and let the dough rest for 30 minutes. Now, this baking sheet tip is probably the best thing I've ever learned because you don't have to deal with covering dough with oiled plastic wrap or a kitchen towel that ends up falling into the dough and gets really sticky. So be sure to utilize that tip and tell everyone you know. Okay, back to the dough. After the first 30 minutes has elapsed, you're going to dimple it again. The dough is actually a lot more elastic at this stage because it has had a chance to relax. So you can actually pick it up and stretch it out to fit the corners and sides of the pan. I want you to pay attention to how I'm dimpling the dough here. I'm keeping my fingers spaced close together, taking time to even out the surface of the dough. The goal is to have a finished baked pizza crust that's even. The next step is to par bake the pizza crust. You're gonna do this at 450 degrees for about 15 to 18 minutes. This is what the underside looks like. And the top is going to be pale in color with some golden spots. To assemble the pizza, start by spreading some pizza sauce 
over the surface of the par-baked crust. I'm using a simple no-cook pizza sauce, only three ingredients, but you can use any pizza sauce that you like. Season with salt. Freshly ground black pepper. and a good handful of fresh basil leaves. Grate some fresh Parmesan cheese on top, and you can be generous here because this adds a really nice depth of flavor. And then drizzle with olive oil to finish. Sprinkle with mozzarella cheese, and what you wanna do is make a border along the outside of the pizza crust so that the cheese falls in between the crust and the pan, creating these gorgeous, crispy edges. I want to quickly tell you about the baking pan that I'm using. It's truly nonstick, which makes your life so much easier when you try to get the pizza out of the pan. It's also made from a special material that really gets you that golden underneath crust. I'll put the link below in the description so that you can check it out too. This last step is optional, but it's so, so delicious. You're gonna to wanna to finish your pizza with Parmesan cheese and then tear up a few basil leaves and scatter them over the top. So that's it. Incredible homemade sourdough pizza, no baking steel, no pizza stone. Enjoy.